So welcome to our first session of the year. Uh, it's been a while since we've met. Um, Gio was the one that presented last, I believe it over a month ago, uh, early in December. <clears throat> and so um, we have a few suggested topics um, and some presenters and that we discussed at the end of last year. Um, and um, it'd be, you know, it'd be great if any of you wanted to volunteer to present in future sessions. Here, there's a couple of days uh, listed. Um, and so, um, one of the topics that people can ask um, to talk about again is how to ask for help. Um, and a bit with a with a JHPCE focus. Um, and so that's what I'll do today. Um, I thought we could also have a session. Um, um, I got a message saying my connection is unstable. Can you hear me? Yeah, all right. So uh, I thought uh, something else we could talk about, not today, but at some point is um, 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 our studio projects and, and shortcuts. Um, basically like learning how to use our studio a bit more. Um, um, where do you have any other ideas, right? You could, um, we could expand this list a bit more. Um, so with that in mind, um, let's talk more about asking for help. Um, and so I was just finishing this Google Doc and I open over here. Um, um, and so it has a few links and stuff that I'll talk about today. So um, if you don't have the reprex package though, um, uh, it'd be great if you could install it. Uh, we could, we'll, I'll show you how to use it in a, in a few minutes. Okay. So um, asking for help with like this PCA related things, in the end is, is, has a lot to do with simply asking for help, right? Um, um, and so the first link is for this chapter that I have on the team website about how to ask for help in general. Um, um, and <clears throat> um, I even have a quote here from one of Jim Hester's tweets, um, um, which here Jim Hester is like uh, saying like, how you name your questions or the uh, basically how you name the, your issues. Uh, I don't know what's opening on Twitter. Anyways, how you uh, name things um, can affect the mood of how, uh, or the people that uh, that help you, right? So if you say like something is broken, that um, uh, doesn't put the authors in a good mood, right? It's in a foul mood. Whereas you say like if it fails with like some you know weird input, right? Then it's like oh okay, I'm telling you something that you can you know that it's not working right now. I can help improve. Um, so it sounds a lot more constructive than like this one. And just like the first message here, it's a bit like uh, like blaming more, right? Um, or demanding help. Um, um, so this is someone that uh, Jim Hester, he worked at Bioconductor um, and our studio, and now he works at Netflix. Um, and so he's dealt with like questions from many, many people um, over the years. Um, all right. So um, you'll notice here that actually the very, very first video we have from the art club uh, from 2020, is about um, uh, reprex. Um, actually, this is not the video I was uh, had in mind. Um, but we go to the spreadsheet uh, all the way to the end. Um, well, maybe not that far away. We don't have 600 videos. Um, the very first video is about reprex, about how to create a small reproducible example. Um, and so we'll, we'll revisit that package today. Um, this is from April 2020. Oh, yeah. 
Um, so there's a lot of stuff here about how to ask for help. Um, and there's like links to different websites where you can ask for help, such as the Conductor Support website or student community. Um, and in terms of JHPC, right, um, we have a, um, there's the um, JHPC Slack channel that a lot of you have access to. And um, there's links here towards the bid help and bid support um, mailing lists. Um, but I don't think I have too much about JSPC here. Mm, let me just check in quickly. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a lot. Um, um, well, I have a little bit about um, okay, these mailing lists, bid support and, and bid help. Um, <clears throat> um, but um, it's just basically linking to, to those uh, mailing lists and, uh, or the emails um, <clears throat> for you can ask for help. Um, uh, now, um, the reality is like there's, um, I mean, these two mailing lists are our main ways you can ask for help to JHPC uh, users and administrators. Now, um, I would say maybe there's two levels of asking for help. There's asking for help to these mailing lists, and there's asking for help at the, on Slack at the JHPC uh, channel. Um, so um, there's even a third, more like private level. Um, um, mm -hmm. Where do we have? Right, so this is the JSPC channel. They want to do that. Um, um, so occasionally, there's some people ask questions here, and like, like for example, here uh, Rossin asked a question about GPUs, and then Nick was able to answer. Right, um, this Slack channel though doesn't have the administrators on it, um, so this is almost like um, um, a way to communicate with like other uh, JSPC users that they might be able to help. Um, internally, we also have a Libre Help Desk channel. So like actually here, someone was asking about J JSPC recently, right? Um, 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 so a lot of you, I think, end up asking questions about JSPC on the Help Desk channel first, potentially the JSPC channel second. Uh, but very few of you, um, um, actually ask questions on the beat help mailing list. Um, so there might be a few reasons for that. One of them might be familiarity, right? Maybe um, or ease of access, right? Um, the, the Slack channels are, are um, basically there, right? Um, I was use Slack all the time, so it's uh, fairly easy to ask a question there. <clears throat> It might be also because you're asking, um, you might know a lot of the people on those Slack channels, right? So you might feel more familiar with them. Um, um, and so it's almost like, um, I mean, right now we're all remote, but like it's almost like going to your neighbor's desk and asking a question, right? It almost feels like that at times, right? <clears throat> Whereas asking on the big help, uh, mailing list might um, uh, might be a bit more scary. Um, feels a little bit too formal at times. Uh, but in any case, um, there's actually um, a lot of uh, uh, you know highly qualified people on this uh, HPC mailing list that can help you. Um, and so, in order to try to remove some of that, email, right? We'll we'll learn a bit more about this mailing list today. Um, um, <clears throat> but first we need to like, I want to highlight a bit like that, um, uh, you want to also practice how to actually ask for help, right? How to do it in a way that, uh, uh, others will have an easier time helping you and will be willing to help. So over here, I'm going to link. I have a link here to, towards a very recent issue from seven days ago. Someone made one of my um, 
uh, in one of my packages, right? Um, um, and so this person here is saying, um, uh, first of all, here says like, there's nothing but unhelpful, extremely terse message. Um, the error log is, isn't helpful, I can't do this. Um, 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 and um, um, like they're trying to report like what is the actual code they ran, what is the errors they're seeing, but like so this, um, like the title without helpful logs, um, uh, this part of being unhelpful, um, again, being unhelpful, etc. cetera, um, just didn't sit right with me. I right? didn't feel like the good tone. Um, so I, I did respond to this person saying like, I didn't appreciate their tone and he didn't want to, he didn't entice me to help, right? Um, um, and you want to be careful with like um, how you're writing your messages uh, when asking for help, right? It's very common that you've spent like um, quite a bit of time trying to debug something. Um, and maybe you're frustrated because like, maybe you need to finish an analysis soon because you have a presentation coming up, right? Or you have a deadline. Um, um, and uh, you're frustrated because like something is not working. Um, uh, maybe you don't understand why it's not working, right? That's a very common scenario. There's a lot of background knowledge sometimes for these things. Um, and so you might help write a message that uh, when you're angry a bit, right? Um, or that actually shows that you're angry. Um, and so what happens to the person that receives that message? They just see someone angry and they're like, oh, well, uh, they're kind of like demanding help. Um, and if that's the case, then like it goes you know, down in my priority list of people that I'm gonna try to help. Right? I'm, if there's five people asking me for help, I'll focus on the four people that are being nice, right? And like leave that person last. Um, Anyways, here, like, I was like, okay, I'm, I don't like your message, but also, like, try to help you, whatever. And, like, this person just kept going. Um, uh, so, um, you can, I mean, if you want to, you can read the full story um, um, of, of, of this person. And so, at some point, looking at, at the messages from, from that user, it reminded me of this um, table that, um, that Jim Hester made. Uh, with all the tweets that he has done over the over, their, over the course of the last year, um, so far, um, about um, things related to towards like developing open source code and like um, um, uh, how people behave, asking uh, asking for help, etc. So these are a lot of great tweets. Um, we won't look at them right now. All of them we saw one earlier. Um, 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 but you might want to check them out later on. Um, all right. So um, that was a bit of the background. Now let's jump a bit into actual solutions. Um, so Reprex, like I said, was uh, actually the very first video from the art club, the null tweets, which, um, you know, um, it's from a while back, April, 2020. Um, um, and so, um, if you wanted to, we have a little video that we'll talk about it in, in more detail than maybe I'll get to do it today, but, um, let's open the, um, the website for Reprex. So, uh, again, if you haven't installed it, here are the commands for installing it. Um, cool. So Reprex, right. <clears throat> so Reprex is an R package that is actually part of this tidyverse. Um, it was developed by like Jenny Bryan and I think Jim Hester. Um, um, oh, I something too much. Uh, yeah, Jim Hester and Jenny Bryan, um, uh, Hadley and other people uh, made this package. And so these are, these are people that uh, were dealing with like, um, hundreds of questions online, right? Um, and so 
they ran into the situation where, yes, they want to be helpful. Um, they want people to use their software, right? Um, but but a lot of times people are, were asking questions in a way that wasn't easy for them to help them, right? So there's this whole concept of like, you know, like help me help you, right? Um, and that's why they made this reprex package um, um, because what they were asking for is, um, actually, let me put another link. Um, was for help for questions um, that they could easily um, like uh, dive into and try to answer. Um, so I'll add this to the Google doc here. Um, So this issue over here, right? Someone is very nice, you know, very um, um, asking a question, they need some help, right? Um, and they say like, okay, like, this is what I have, um, um, uh, but I'm getting an error. Um, uh, later on, if I use this other data, um, uh, I also get an error, right? Um, and so I was like, oh, you know, Thank you for your interest. Thanks for the time for reporting, but like I can't, they're not making it easy for me to help. And that's because here I can see exactly what are the inputs to this function, right? Create RSC in this case. I can see that this person is using um, that information, right? But I can't really copy paste it, right? I would need to make, uh, like copy this and make a little data frame with this column names and then these values myself, right? Once I had that, then I could be able to reproduce this, right? It's not like it's, it's impossible to do, right? Um, um, it just means that I can't easily copy paste uh, uh, things. And so um, um, it's common for people to ask questions and take screenshots of error messages. That's like the hardest level of difficulty because you have to actually type the, the code that that person showing you on, on the screenshot, you want to try to reproduce the problem. Um, the next level is, is something like this, where like um, you have to re, you, know, you can copy paste, but then you have to spend some time reformatting um, this text into actual uh, code that you can run, right? Um, 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 another common situation is, uh, uh, people will sometimes, um, let me uh, close this and open our studio. Um, uh, so let's see. A lot of times people will copy this output from the console, right? Uh, and so that's, that's what they will report to you. Um, mm -hmm. And you're like, uh, well, okay. I can copy paste it. I need to delete the output. I need to delete the um, greater than line um, uh, in order for me to actually be able to run it, right? And like, imagine that this is like a multi-line piece of code, right? Um, then if you copy paste this to someone, in order to make it into something that they can actually run, you know, they you have all the like plus symbols they need to delete, right? Um, all this formatting stuff. Um, and so it's doable, right? But it just takes a little bit of time, right? Um, and so that's where this reprex package comes in because, um, if you have it installed, right, um, you can uh, load it with library reflex. And then if you're having some code that's giving you an error, right, 
Um, instead of selecting the output over here and copy pasting it, um, if you select the actual um, code on your on your um, um, on your um, source file, you're gonna copy it. Right click copy. Then I'll just do reprex, and I'm gonna call that function without any uh, any arguments. Um, we want to be even more precise. Reprex, colon, colon, reprex. Um, and so reprex here recognizes uh, what you have on your um, clipboard history. And then um, it creates a little nice, um, a little like tiny like HTML file where you have the code, you have the output of, of the error in this case. But you can see that like it changed the prompts. Um, so now the output here has pound greater than. So that means that if someone else, if you give this to someone else, they can copy this and paste uh, it on their uh, terminal and get exactly that same error. And you can see here a comment with the, with the original error that like the person reported, right? In this case, like I, I was able to reproduce the exact same error, right? I get exactly the same message. Um, and so this makes it like very, very easy for someone else to try to help you, right? So let me do reprex, uh, sorry, let me copy this again, we're on reprex. Um, you'll notice here at the end, reprex says like the output is on your clipboard history. And so what does that mean? Um, like if you're, on, if you're on GitHub, I'm just gonna paste over here and it automatically puts uh, the full syntax you need um, for, for Markdown. Um, so if I'm gonna click here in the preview and we see that's exactly the, the same information we were seeing on, um, on our studio on this HTML file, right? Um, so now, uh, first of all, like, Yes, you're making it easy for someone else to copy paste this code um, and help you. But second of all, you're making sure that the code that you provide fully reproduces the error that you have, right? Um, it's very common that people will ask for um, a question and the, the description of the problem just shows the error or like the last function call, but doesn't show like, how like maybe some of the inputs were constructed, um, et cetera. Um, uh, because let's let's try something that would all be along those lines. Um, Right. So <clears throat> this is a situation where we have an input, just calling it A, right? And then we have some error message where we're actually using A, right? Um, so if I just copy this last line and then try to do the reprex, um, you'll notice here that, uh, let me try to make this bigger, move zoom out of the way. Um, you'll notice that the error message from the reprex is different than the one we have on the console, right? And so here the error message in reprex is saying like object A is not found, right? Uh, whereas um, um, the actual error message was like, um, you know, different, right? Um, um, <clears throat> and so, um, Reprex is almost helping you as um, uh, make sure that you're reporting the exact code that uh, leads to the same error you're getting, right? Because here, yes, we on the right side, we do have a problem, uh, but it's not the same problem we had initially, right? If I copy both lines three and four, then run Reprex, uh, now we actually get um, 
um, uh, now we actually get the same error message, right? A is creating an error, here's A, right? Et cetera. So that's, I mean, these are just uh, simple examples. Um, 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 like if I go back to what this user was asking for help, right? It's almost like um, the first scenario that I was showing without copying A is like you had copied just RSC, create RSC. Um, but then you didn't provide RSC, RS, RSC info, right? Um, um, so that's um, um, that's why these reprocess packages is like um, it's guiding users into make or helping users make better questions, right? Because you're providing something that. Um, Someone else can easily copy paste, reproduce the exact same error, um, and it's um, adding this verification process. So you'll actually see, like, am I am I reproducing the error that, that I'm that I'm seeing, right? So all of that in, all of that plays into asking questions related to R at um, um, on JHPC, right? Um, and that's because I mean, everyone here has um, maybe different degrees of experience and a lot of you are like learning, right? Um, and so you'll see that a lot of people ask questions without providing enough information for someone else to try to uh, help them. <clears throat> um, um, another package that we didn't talk about right now is like the session info package, right? Um, and so that, that one, we. Um, a lot of us use. And so I'll just show you an example here quickly. Um, um, where um, if you use the session info package, at the very end, it tells you what it, what is the path to the packages that you have installed. Um, and so on JHPC, if I do this, um, mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Here on JHPC, if I do this, um, you can ex you can see exactly that I'm using like R four point one X, um, and um, I know it's some black, and I'm not sure how to change the colors, but um, yeah. Well, let me just copy paste this. Um, um, uh, like G JHPC um, um, admins will recognize like, okay, you're using this particular version of R, et cetera, right? Um, so these might be um, some lines of code that like maybe don't tell you much, but like um, to the administrators, this tells them, the, this tells them exactly where, uh, what packages you're using, et cetera. Um, and so this, it could be useful in some scenarios to help reproduce the problem, uh, not on all of them. Cool. Um, so now, now that we know about uh, reprex, let's actually talk in more detail about these two main lists. Um, so um, they have two instead of just one, and that's because they need, they need a communication channel that can be private by design. And so that is the bit support mailing list. So this is when you like uh, um, useful if you have problems with um, so that's a, this one I would say is useful if you if you're having problems like logging in or you need um, you forgot your password type of thing, right? Um, but I, I rarely use bit support beyond beyond that. Um, I would highly encourage you to use bit help for almost anything. And that's because um, bit help here, uh, you're gonna have um,
you're going to have multiple people reading your message. Um, um, and so uh, in bid help, you're going to have, uh, for example, Casper Daniel Hansen, the person who uh, compiles R at JHPC, he's on that mailing list. Or there's um, a couple other people from like Hopkins School of Public Health that are like uh, math lab experts or um, um, things like that. Um, and so, like for example, like if you ask me a question about math lab at GSPC, I don't really I can't really help you because I, I'm not a math lab user, right? Um, but there there might be uh, users of the of the programming languages that you're using um, that can help you on this mailing list. Now, this one is, um, you can also access the history of it. And so this is the second link, uh, which let me open in a new window and zoom in. Um, so I guess, sorry, I wanted to show you this. This is how it normally looks. Um, it, uh, it says you have to click this button that's saying that I'm not a spammer. Um, um, and once you do, um, you, now you can see the history of messages, right? Um, and so this can be helpful if you have an error uh, message that maybe there's a particular keyword you want to search. So, this uh, four. Mm, I always forget the spelling of that. Mm, let's see if it shows up. Um, all right, it's not giving me. I guess the health is not. Um, all right. Because the search, I was trying to give you an, an example for the search, but it's not working. <laughs> let's, let's search MATLAB. Oh, maybe maybe they have the search disabled. Okay. Um, I occasionally remember, um, like um, when a question was discussed, and um, I send you a particular link to here. Um, um, I'm not exactly sure why the search isn't working for me right now. Um, um, but in any case, the idea is that you can search uh, all their messages to see if someone else has and their um, encounter an error like the one you did. Right? Um, um, all right. Um, so you could potentially use this here, but um, more importantly, through this website, you can actually subscribe to it. Um, and so this is, if you wanna be one of the users that gets a copy of every help message sent to beat help. And so um, I know that for example, uh, uh, Mahavi, right? Um, she was telling me that she would like to know more about JHPC, right? Um, so someone like her might be interested in actually signing up. Um, 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 I hesitate whether to ask people in my team to sign up or not. Um, um, you, you will learn things from seeing um, the answers that uh, people give to, to problems, right? Um, but some of the things you'll learn might be, can be maybe quite technical, right? I know that, for example, Nick Eagles, right, has run into problems that uh, we had to ask for help on Big Help. And now that we know those, the solutions to those problems, actually the other people run into that kind of, um, you know, every few months they run into a similar problem. So um, 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 situations like that where like if you're installing software, right? Um, and you're gonna do that frequently, it might be helpful for you to actually be part of this mailing list such that like when you encounter an error, Maybe that's the same error someone else has already asked a question about, right? Um, or if you don't mind getting like maybe 
two to four emails per day. Okay, I mean, not every day. Some days you get, basically whenever there's um, a question, you might get three or four emails that same day. Um, but if you don't mind getting those emails, you could sign up. Um, and if it's, if you, if you see quickly that this is a topic that is um, in that particular email thread is, is a topic that you're not interested as much, you can like ar archive that email or delete it, right? Um, so um, I think like at some point, people are gonna cross a threshold for like, you're gonna become um, like, um, 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 a much more um, um, like power user of HPC. Um, and at that point, I think it, it would definitely help if you sign up. You could also think of it as um, like balancing out when you need help, right? So if you sign up, answer questions when you can, right? Maybe that, um, maybe when you ask a question yourself, right? People will be. Um, um, eager to try to help you out too, right? Um, and so, uh, I, from personally, for me, like, um, uh, I think I signed up in like 2012 or something like that, a long time ago when I was um, um, early on on my PG. Um, and I wanted to like, learn from the questions people were asking, right? And so that did help me a lot early on. And later on now, it's more about like, I occasionally want to help out others um, because I've received so much help in the past, right? Um, from, from others. So it's almost like, a, um, like wanting to give back a bit. Um, um, so yeah, I would definitely encourage people from my team to join, but like, um, you know, uh, um, and I think a lot of you here might be also interested in joining to this mailing list. And, and um, you could, I mean, you could give it a try for a month or two and then maybe unsubscribe later on if you're not interested anymore, right? Um, and um, KJ's telling us via uh, the chat that, um, um, oops. Um, um, that the search apparently only limited to the last month. Um, search package, for example. Okay, yeah. So we were asking something about a package or something, so you can see those. Um, so, um, um, yeah. So for example, here, like there's a, there was a user asking about how to install a package. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and so a lot of you have installed packages at JHPC, so you, you could have answered this question, right? Or help answer this question a bit. Um, cool. So, um, um, so I guess in a bit in summary, uh, if you run into problems um, in, uh, using PC, particularly a lot of us is R, right? Um, um, so if you're running into an R problem uh, at JSPC, you'll want to use Reprex um, 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 to write your email um, to beat help. Don't uh, write it to beat help, not beat support. Um, and uh, you might want to include your session information. Um, um, also, like if, if this has to do with, if your error has to do with, um, with permissions and things like that, you'll want to include the actual path on JHPC to where you're working. Um, so I think that's all I had in mind related to this topic. Um, so with that, we'll, I'll end the recording and then let's see if any of you have questions.